American business ethics do not exist. In business, apparently, you've got to assume right from the beginning that you're dealing with people who have got the morals of barnyard roosters, and you better have good lawyers and large resorts and be on your guard. Critics of Maxwell's unorthodox business practices say they're wary of him for similar reasons. Nevertheless, flamboyant, charming, some say ruthless, Maxwell remains one of Britain's most famous adopted sons. He travels in his own yacht, owns a soccer team, publishes six newspapers including the powerful British tabloid The Daily Mirror. Maxwell mixes with world leaders, royalty, yet is often lampooned in the press as Captain Bob or the bouncing check. You understand that you are a very controversial man in this country. I'm delighted. Many, many people see you as a genius. See me as what? A genius. Genius? Yes. There are others, however, less fond of you, who see you as a bit of a buffoon. Is that <laughs> They're entitled to their opinion. At 66, he's already the subject of three biographies that often play up the drama while stretching credibility as evidence from this promotional tool used to sell books. Member of the Czech underground, sentenced to death at 16, given four weeks to live 23 years ago. Inspiring soldier, romantic family man. He was born Jan Ludwig Hock, one of nine children, the son of unemployed Jewish farm workers in Czechoslovakia. We lived in uh, one room with seven children, hungry most of the time did not have any clothes to wear in winter. Well, as a child, I remember dreaming about owning a piece of land and a cow. With only three years of formal education, World War II was Maxwell's real school. Joining the Czech resistance, he ended up a captain in the British Army, earned a military cross for bravery, married a French woman, still his wife, and anglicized himself with the name Robert Maxwell. I enjoyed the war. You did? Why? Because it was exciting and I was rather foolhardy and volunteered for dangerous missions all the time. Your family's clear back in Czechoslovakia. What, what were Without you thinking? Without knowing. Well, I was constantly thinking about them. The last communication I received was a letter f through the Red Cross from my mother to say that she was well in 1943. And then you didn't hear from them again? Didn't hear from them again until after the war, when I met two sisters, which I liberated from the concentration camp, who told me how they were taken away in 1944 in July and driven straight to Auschwitz and gassed with five of my sisters and brothers. It still is an incredible thought. I can't accept it. It is not for me to forgive, and I cannot forget. In post-war Berlin, Maxwell founded Pergamon Press, which grew into the leading publisher of scientific journals, the basis of his fortune. In the 60s, the socialist Maxwell twice won a labor seat in Parliament. Personally, his losses included the deaths of two of his seven children, a daughter to leukemia, a son in a car accident. In 1969, an attempted merger with American Saul Steinberg went sour. Maxwell lost control of Pergamon Press and with it, his fortune. How much were you left with? Nothing, virtually. Just money? A million? Nothing. Nothing? Yes, because it's very expensive. I lost five years of my life. And very expensive litigation following. How, how does it feel and I, I, to suddenly know that you've lost everything? <laughs> It feels awful, but uh, to me, I dusted myself down and got up and got on with the job. And for all practical purposes, I should have been dead and gone then. But I never give up. By the mid-70s, Maxwell had regained Pergamon Press and was on the way to realizing his goal of turning Maxwell Communications into one of the ten major global communication companies for the 90s. Today, the workaholic puts in seven-day weeks, answering a hundred daily phone calls in one of the ten languages he speaks. Said, uh, 
и когда мы увидимся, yes, the joint venture with the Finns and the Russians on a paper mill. I can't decide whether you have extraordinary self-confidence or extraordinary determination. Both. Is there anything that scares you? Yes. What? Lack of time.